Welcome to the new episode of the I Am Live podcast on this channel Ad Astra to the stars. On this channel we are going to talk and unveil the success stories of enlightened personalities, supernatural phenomena beyond scientific investigation, the existence of aliens or advanced species, UFO sightings, philosophical and psychological topics aligned with occult and esoteric truth. I am Sir Neitz, your host in this I Am live podcast. Reality is not solid, but rather it is fluid and derived from the soup of the ether or the universe, so it's called dark matter. Welcome to my new episode in my YouTube channel at Astra to the Star. Today I'm going to talk about the science of creation and manifestation from the ether to matter. Uh, we human beings are vibrating sound and light as we speak and think in space or in the ether. The ether in a dome shape, as we see it from below, captures our thoughts and bounces back to us a solid object in reality, like a sound inside a cave. The universe, as a grand mirror, gives what we desire and vibrate. For my basic thesis on this topic on creation and manifestation, I am indebted always to the statement of Nikola Tesla and Albert Einstein. They strongly claim for the longest time, I quote, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Physical matters as we are beings are just forms of energy, frequency, and vibration as we co-create the, the universe by our thoughts and words in consonance with vibration from our hearts in the quantum field or space. Actually, the song When You Wish Upon a Star from the movie of Walt Disney unveils the mystery of creation and manifestation through sound and vibration sacred geometry and dynamics of light in a form of energy. It is magical and esoteric of those who understand the mechanics on quantum manifestation through thought vibration, frequency and energy. Now, this is where the mystery and the science of creation begins. The first evidence of my claim on this topic is found in the Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the New Testament, the same reality has been implicitly manifested in the Gospel as the Logos in Greek, which means word and sound in English translation. Evangelist John echoes an esoteric power of the Word in vibrational sequence when he proclaims in his Gospel. We can say it in another way. In the beginning was the sound, and the sound was with God, and the sound was God. Therefore, in the Gospel, the word is the sound, and the sound here is the vibration. The word originates not from the sound, and the sound has its own vibration and frequency that transmutes sound into solid matter in the quantum field. The same holds true no, in the book of Genesis chapter 1 uh, verse 3 when God says and God said that there be light and there was light. The Bible resonates the quantum manifestation of sound and light in real time. God invoked the same the sound first then vibrated the sound in a specific frequency and immediately the reality of the solar system of light, or light appeared in our galaxy. In the same way man came out alive after God breathed in vibration from his nostril in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, the breath of life. As a fractal of God, man is a sovereign being like God because man came from God from source itself. Now, where does the basis of the power of man to co-create and create 
derived. The Old Testament supports the mystery of creation. Genesis chapter 1 verse 20, 26 says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish and the sea and the birds of the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Now to explain this uh, biblical passage, God has entrusted to us human beings, to us human beings the works of creation to duplicate his works. He gave us the power to create via sound wave, although in different and various frequencies. We are all connected in a holographic matrix in the invisible web and wave of strings in the ether with elect electromagnetic force. Therefore, we share each other in all things as one consciousness. We even breath, breathe, and exchange the same atoms or air among each other from time to time. If we share the same source as one consciousness and monad, which is God, then God allows human beings to co-create also via some way because we are created a pattern to his image and likeness. Instead, we indeed, we design our destiny to intensity of the vibration of our thought and words. As being created in this image and likeness, we create a reality through our thought and desire. God is the source of life and energy. An energy form allows us to become makers of our reality as he respects our own free will. God wants to experience in experience different realities through us with a strong intention of our mind we are the co-creators or creators of the universe because we're also fractal of God in vibrational energy furthermore an occultist Wes Penry claimed that the universe is ideal material a thought form by its essence the universe as Ideal material from the word idea is formed to the to vibration and thought pattern before it becomes solid. It has to reach first into ceiling of space called thought boundary of the ether in using unisonic formation before it bounces back now to space time reality where solid matter is being transformed and experienced in the collective consciousness in the 3D earth. The own sound of Buddhism and even the name of God, Yahweh of the Hebrews, signify the cosmic sound of the universe that creates matter. Besides, the hermetic principle of mentalism says that there is no such thing as solid. Everything is mind, spirit, consciousness, or energy. The blueprint of the house is more important than the physical structure of the house because the blueprint cannot be destroyed in the mind while the physical structure of the house can be destroyed by fire, storm, or any other calamities. The third proof of the, of the science of creation and manifestation comes from the theory of epigenetics. The proponents of this theory are as follows. Dr. Bruce Lipton, Dr. Joe Dispenza, and also Deepak Chopra. We have been programmed since childhood. Rewiring or reprogramming is needed to create and manifest what we desire. Our created reality is based from our programming uh, since childhood. That is why, according to the biology of belief of Dr. Bruce uh, Dipton, epigenetics no, can show us how our environment and thoughts influ influence our cells. His research has taught us that cells have intelligence and live in cooperative communities working together in response to the signals they get 
from their environment. He further, he further claims that the cell, that cell behavior is a mirror to human behavior. In relation with epigenetics, I will explain the dynamics of conscious and subconscious minds in the science of creation. Creation or manifestation of reality is governed by subconscious mind. By default, our reality is governed by our subconscious mind, not our conscious mind. What we send to the ether in the thought boundary before it bounces back in space time, physical reality, comes from our subconscious mind. So that is why we are, if we want to create and manifest what we want, rewire or reprogram our own subconscious thoughts in the new conscious mind and later becomes our default in the subconscious mind that vibrates and creates reality with a new perspective of what we want in life as a spell echoed by the genie of the movie your wish is my command i'm going to explain uh, to to understand better this uh, topic which i'm discussing right now on the manifestation of matter from uh, from from either to matter i would like to explain the theory of simulation uh, how to, to reclaim our sovereignty as a creator of our reality as in a mirror as in a mirror in in this uh, theory of simulation in order that to become a creator of our reality let, let us analyze life as a simulation in computer game we are controlled by the matrix as in a computer game in order to become a creator and to, to manifest what we want in in 3d world we have to get out from the matrix as i i would like to discuss the three stages of our reality and how to to, to get rid of it to get out of it okay i would like you to uh, to listen carefully the first one is man is a player in a simulation game many of us are minions playing as competitive players in the computer game we even willing to sacrifice and die in order to win the game then play again by allowing the computer operator without our own free will to play the same game as avatars or as slaves according to operators whims and caprices until we reach the next stage as an actor in the game in the second stage as man as an actor in the simulation game this time you want to win the game in this stage you are no longer as a as an avatar in the game but an actor emotionally playing the game this time you want to win and enjoy the game however you are not sure of winning the game because there are many actors whom you compete with competitive skills that you have this is the time you experience sufferings or pains when you could not win the game you become frustrated and you are willing to incarnate over and over again in order to win the game. This is where karma or attachment occurs in the next life or incarnation until you reach the, the third stage as a creator or programmer of the computer game. Take note, we are now at the third stage now, the programmer of the game. Man should get up from the matrix of the game and become a programmer. Man is the creator of his reality through his default intention embedded in his subconscious mind. In a simulation game, it is very taxing or laborious to become a player and actor of the game. Your physical, emotional, and spiritual bodies are involved in the game. Sufferings and pains are indispensable in your journey towards ascension. You are governed with your karma and cycle because 
you cannot get out from the matrix. You are trapped in the physical world, world, or in the 3D realities. So that is why be, that's why be an objective observer of your reality is the solution to get rid of this uh, pain and suffering as a programmer. You observe your own sufferings as if you are not involved or just watching your own reality detach from yourself. By uh, looking at your own hologram detached from your physical and emotional bodies, you can freely program your life into the next game because life is just an illusion or just a simulation. What is real is the emotion you attach to your life as a player and actor of the game because in reality there is no death. For my conclusion, man has created gods as wonderful beings whom they surrender their innate power. Some priests, gurus, and spiritual masters introduced the concept of God to establish their kingdoms and still the power within us or the power of humanity to create their kingdom in, in churches and temples everywhere. Again, the hermetic principle of the cause and effect would clarify how man has created gods and give all their power as if God is separated from us. Our power to create and co-create with God has been stolen from us, wherein humanity becomes miserable because he needs a savior outside from his or her nature. Again, we are a fractal of God. We are sovereign. We can manifest what we want from the ether and turn that into matter if we are you know, in the right vibration and frequency. Thank you very much for watching this uh, podcast. For my last words, from the stars, we came and to the stars, we shall return. Thank you very much. Namaste.